Throughout most of our history, mental illness has been regarded as evil, and those who suffer from it have been met with fear, often imprisoned like criminals. Even in the mid-19th century, when there was a move to establish facilities known as asylums, the treatment of the mentally ill was largely limited to physical restraints. It wasn't until the 1950s that the care of patients with mental illness began to change, when an anesthesiologist searching for a different anesthetic agent first developed chlorpromazine. While the drug was not a particularly good anesthetic, when it was given to individuals with schizophrenia, it had the ability to calm and even alleviate psychotic symptoms. In 1954, it was introduced under the trade name Thorazine, and the modern era of psychotropic medication was born. Before we can begin to discuss assessment and intervention, it is important to understand something about neurotransmitters, the substances that allow nerve pathways to communicate information throughout the body. Neurotransmitters are the chemical switches of the nervous system. They allow neurologic impulses to cross synapses, carrying the impulse to another nerve or muscle fiber, or to a specific body structure. These chemicals are responsible for the movement of nerve impulses throughout the entire body. The interplay of neurotransmitters is complex and not fully understood, but we do know that in some individuals these chemical agents have become out of balance. And when these imbalances occur in neurotransmitters such as norepinephrine and serotonin, it can lead to mental difficulties. In many cases, medications can help to stabilize or restore this delicate balance and allow the individual to lead a more normal life. Assessment can occur in both an inpatient setting, for instance in a hospital, and an outpatient setting, such as a psychiatrist's office. And in both environments, a range of behaviors should be taken into consideration. These include restlessness and an inability to sit quietly, lack of expression or facial expressions that indicate emotions inappropriate to the situation, consistent late arrivals or frequent absences, lack of cooperation or a general inability to work with others, impaired work productivity, increased accidents or safety problems, frequent complaints of fatigue or unexplained pains, difficulty concentrating, making decisions, or remembering things, making excuses for missed appointments, deadlines, or poor work, decreased interest or involvement in one's work and relationships, expressions of strange or grandiose ideas, displays of anger or blaming of others, weeping for no reason,